brace yourself. Here come the Houston Oilers. Go Houston Oilers! And the 1993 season is underway. Look at those defensive players. Look at them. Yep. They are having a ball. Crushing like bugs. <laughs> The Oilers appear slightly out of sync. Don't get discouraged. Just keep working. Come on. When this offense clicks, there's no stopping it. Three step drop on the fade for Duncan. Touchdown! Yeah! You dominate, baby. Dominate. The most physical will win. Separate the man from the boys, baby. The character of this team has really been tested this season. Well, I think far too many people find themselves identifying with the great pessimist Schopenhauer, you know? So hit, stick, buzz, and talk. That's all we got to do. The Oilers not only speak a language all their own, they walk their talk as well. Throws it down the seam. He has a man. Oh, that counter up to out, did you? Don't be with Dan. We're a team with destiny. We're going to take this thing. Steelers faking blitz. Here they come, drop it off on the screen for Brown, wide open, 25, 20, cutting inside, 15, still dancing to the center, 10, 5, foot race to the goal line, Gary Brown, 38 yards on the screen pass. Ladies and gentlemen, salute your Houston Oilers, back from a 1-4 and four start, they are now AFC Chelsea, baby, right here, Central. So proud of you, the way you've hung in there and overcome a lot this year, sticking together as a team. This team has been to hell and back. What a season. It's unlike any other. Congratulations. You got a lot to be thankful for. Y'all got a lot of guts. Let's have a rebel winner. Rebel winner. Let's have a prayer. There you go, baby. If anyone had warned head coach Jack Pardee of all the adversity his Oilers would face in 1993, he would have tried to delay the season opener. While learning a new defensive system, Houston suffered through some growing pains. The Oilers lost fair and square to the Saints, but they were thoroughly ripped off against the Chargers. When a game-winning catch was ruled incomplete, Houston's hope for a quick start vanished. A week later, they were run over by the Rams. The Oilers and their faithful wondered. It's because people like you, the Oilers got the problem that they got. Hey, I'm here Either supporting them, ain't I? Yeah, you're here supporting them, but you're bad mouth at the same time. Everybody has written us off. Everybody say the Houston Oilers is a big flop. Everybody say the Houston Oilers is not going to make the playoffs. Okay, we already know that part. Everybody is talking negative about us. Go out, have fun. What do you have to lose? What's going on? Mandatory fun, baby. Mandatory fun. Let's go. <laughs> the Oilers had no fun in Buffalo. Houston was searching for that cutting edge. Our offense is geared around me being successful, me being sharp every week, and that doesn't always happen. You took me out, man. Jack told me one. A one and four record called for a change. Making a move like this, it does not mean all the blame goes to Warren. Uh, and there's no way of the situation we're in, there's uh, plenty of people uh, that, that contributed to the situation we're in. We're looking for something. We're just grasping. The a little hurt. My ego's a little hurt. And so the switch has been made. The Oilers are on a three-game skid, and they've taken, I guess, the most drastic measure you can, and that's benching a guy who's been to the Pro Bowl five of his ten NFL seasons and put Cody Carlson in to run the offense. Carlson rolling left, looking to throw, under pressure, scrambles to his right, still on his feet, he's going to run to the five, to the three, and he is in for a touchdown! In these times, even touchdowns came at a price. And that's Carlson down yes. on the ground. We may see a switch here necessitated by injury. He just falls down. He pulled the, that groin muscle again. Yeah. And here comes Warren Moon in a relief roll for Cody Carlson. Interesting twists and turns of, of fate. 
Trials and tribulation enable the Oilers to interpret these events philosophically. A crust of bread, a corner to sleep in, a minute to smile, an hour to weep in. A pint of joy to a peck of trouble and never laugh that the moans come double and that is life. But life is worth more than living. Never give up, baby. Never give up. Warren Moon never gave up. And for the first time all season, the Oilers played error-free. Of Webster Slaughter's team-high 77 receptions, none were more important than the two he caught for touchdowns. Moon again looks to throw, looks, looks over the middle, and the end zone touchdown! Is there magic in Moon's bag of tricks? New England was the turning point. Now, the Oilers started the journey back with better days ahead. On the road to recovery, Moon transformed a rocky beginning into a season of triumph. Right, throwing right, well, and at the five, looking for the corner, touchdown! He has the time, now he's forced back to his left, throwing to his left, touchdown, Haywood Jeffries! Moon pump fakes, throws to his right, two, and touchdown! Rolling left, to get away from pressure, floats it up, slaughters the goal, and a touchdown! Drops back to throw, pumps once, now looking to throw back to the right, he's got Duncan, touchdown! Near side, Jeffrey, touchdown, they say! Jeffrey, touchdown, number two in the afternoon! Haywood Jeffries is third in the afternoon, fourth of the day for Warren Moon! Moon was voted to the Pro Bowl for the sixth straight season, and accompanying him each year has been Bruce Matthews, named the best offensive lineman in the NFL. Mike Munchak made the Pro Bowl for a team record ninth time, and with his solid blocking, the Oilers breezed past the Bengals. For Gary Brown, 10, 5, touchdown! Oh. There was a special feeling in the air. Houston's record improved to 3 and 4. That's it, baby. Back on track, back on track. When this is all said and done, man, can I go back on kickoff return, man? You have to prove yourself on offense first. <laughs> Part of the Oiler magic was the metamorphosis of Gary Brown from special teams player into running back extraordinaire. In Houston's second victory over the Bengals, Brown rushed for 166 yards, an impressive total, considering it was the first start of his career. Brown gave an encore performance a week later in Cleveland. His 194 rushing yards were the most by an oiler in 14 years. Houston won again, and Brown was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Month. Quick count, hand up, Brown hits the pile, runs up, going left at the five, he'll score! Oh, he turned something bad into something good! All the non-believers out there, woo, too much, bam! We in there, baby. There was a new attitude. These Oilers were aggressive and daring, possessing a previously unseen maturity. Still, they attacked in a fashion about as subtle as a jackhammer between the eyes. The Oilers forced five turnovers in an early season shutout against the Chiefs. On first and ten, Craig short drop, throwing outside tight end Mike Dial at the 45, fighting his way forward, and the ball is stripped away by Nishman. He's back the other way. Off, that is five, count of five turnovers on the ball game. Once they learned the 46 defense, there was a certain swagger to this step. Takeaways became routine. There were another five in Cleveland, as Marcus Robertson became the first Oiler in 22 years to intercept three passes in one game. In the rematch with Cleveland, Chris Dishman was the hero, setting up the game-winning field goal. The Oilers were caught between the delirious disbelief of turning their season around and the cool self-satisfaction of a job well done. Each week, they mastered another challenge. See the back of this? That's what they ass gonna be seeing. Andre Risen must have liked the odds against Steve Jackson, not even a starter at the beginning of the season. By hook or by crook, 
the Oilers swiped passes. Coming into the game, Bobby Hebert had thrown only six interceptions. By game's end, that number had doubled. The secondary licked their chops, wanting more. Their six interceptions was the highest total by the Oilers in 16 years. Hebert throwing outside, far side, intercept! The Oilers proved Atlanta couldn't walk the talk. When they said we were beating nobody, it not make a difference, we're still in first place. Houston stayed on top by using eight-man fronts to sucker opponents into thinking pass. They brought safeties up on the line to confuse blockers. In the end, most passers couldn't handle the pressure. To throw from his end zone. He's in trouble. He left-handed the ball out of there, and the flag is going to go down. This could be a safety. It is. It is. The Seahawks managed only 46 plays and held the ball for less than 20 minutes. Houston was rarely upstaged at home. They said they had the best linebacker core, but we proved we were the best. This is full house or our house. Welcome to the house of You know, it's no mystery why people are so enthralled with sports. You know why? Mirrors the drama of life. It's so exciting. You gotta love this stuff. You ain't got nothing to say. Ain't nothing to talk about, baby. It's after Thanksgiving. I didn't even eat Thanksgiving Day because I know I'm getting some food today. I'm eating me a stew. Houston chewed up and spit out Pittsburgh's passers in a battle for first place in the AFC Central. Six sacks and four turnovers, including a clutch interception by Bubba McDowell, sent Pittsburgh packing. The run and shoot used every available inch of turf to stretch the field. It's an offense based on pattern precision that sets records every season. Houston used the one-two punch of its all-time leading receiver Ernest Gibbons and its Pro Bowl pass catcher Haywood Jeffries to deliver the knockout blow. Let's go, babe, let's go! Move the throw from the shotgun, deep down the middle for Jeffries, he's got it the 30, and the 20, and the 10, he is going to score! Haywood Jeffries! Oh, you doubt us, you better look out for the Houston Oilers. Hey, you don't want to talk too much, do they? Oh, they can't talk too much now, baby. We did it. We did it convincingly. Being atop the AFC Central seemed so impressive. Then, a tragedy put it into perspective. The importance shrunk dramatically. It's good, D. Got snappy. Five days after the death of Jeff Alm, the most demanding week of Houston's topsy-turvy season ended at Three Rivers Stadium. Hey, we got to do it for Jeff, man. That's the only thing on our mind. We'll do it for Jeff, we'll go all the way. Still mourning a friend, but trying to beat a foe, the Oilers harness their emotion. Let's go, you. Let's go 480, screen right there. One. 480 is the terminology for a screen pass, ideal against a blitz. Moon had the Steelers' number. Here they come, drop it off on the oh, screen from Brown, wide oh, open. Oh, 25, 20, cut the inside, 15, still dancing to the center, 10, 5 foot race to the goal line, touchdown! Gary Brown, 38 yards on the screen pass! Hey, what's it called? Oh, green, 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 what? Green, that's all he said. Green, great. Did you go green, 480? Nice job. You saw the boots coming, huh? Hey! All phases of the game were executed to perfection. Pro Bowl punter Greg Montgomery placed three of his four punts inside the 20-yard line. A career-best performance was turned in by Al Del Greco. He accounted for 14 of his team record 126 points. Everybody think it's going to be a nasty battle? It's going to be a clean-cut fight. You know, we... In the most stressful moments of the season, Houston was never more forceful, feared, or infallible. From a shotgun, O'Donnell's going to throw. Down the middle, he throws it, intercepted! It's Orlando at the 35, 30, 25, 20, down the sideline, 10, 5, Houston Oilers! AFC Central Division Champions! Go! 
Guys, you know, we, we went through a, a tragic experience this week losing one of our teammates, and uh, everybody sucked it up today. I'm sure Jeff was in the back of everybody's minds today, but we still put it behind us, and we went out and played a great football game. But I still think it's important. I know a lot of guys went out today with him on, on their minds. I know I did, and I know I wanted to win this game for him. So I think it's appropriate and fitting that we give this game ball to Jeff's parents on behalf of our victory today and being Central Amen. Division champion. Right? Houston was on such a roll that even Santa himself flew in to see if these orders were for real. And on Christmas Day, they made believers of even the 49ers. Twice, Houston intercepted passes in the end zone, and the game's only touchdown pass proved to be the margin of victory. Moon short rolling right, looking for Gibbons at the flat, at the two at the one, touchdown! Ernest Gibbons from Warren Moon, for Moon, that touchdown pass, number 21. The potential of the human individual is infinite. Limitations are largely of habit and convention. It's very important that you remember that. With only themselves to amuse, the Oilers had nothing but pride to play for in the regular season finale. Still, they weren't satisfied. Be careful, I can't talk very much. Gary Woman's hanging around, trying to over... Eavesdropping what I'm saying. It's a tribute to Houston's coaches that players are always paying close attention. See, I like to keep an eye on you to watch. It's unbelievable what I see. Incredible. Against the Jets, Gary Wellman applied what he had learned, catching eight passes for over 100 yards. Cody Carlson started in place of Moon, and the run and shoot never missed a beat. Carlson looking to throw, has plenty of time, deep for the end zone, give it! Pro Bowl defensive tackle Ray Childress's career best three sacks helped the defense set a franchise record of 52. The Jets were shut out, but there was still one last river to cross. And now he is unofficially with 75 yards, eight shy of a thousand. First and goal for the 15, a delay yeah. for Brown, looking for him up the middle to the 10, breaks to the right at the five, and he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Give that young man the football and get him off the field. Yeah. Yeah. In only eight games, Brown gained 1,000 yards, a truly amazing accomplishment. Not a bad half year. He's got the football, he's going off the field. It's a big night for Gary Brown. His dad was here to watch him. One of his biggest boosters. And there he goes. The Oilers' 12 wins set a franchise record for victories in a season, an achievement owner Bud Adams could be proud of. Hey, Coach. Tough, bizarre game there now. I'll tell you. The Oilers made the playoffs for an NFL best seventh straight season. And in the second round, they hosted the Kansas City Chiefs. Joe Montana? Who's that, man? Oh, that guy's 37 years old, Lenny. We're going to take it to him today. Knockout, baby. Right from the start, Houston went after Joe Montana and forced him into making mistakes. Montana to throw. Hands he throws. Ball is up in the air. Intercepted by the Oilers at the 36. It's intercepted Terry Hall with the Oilers' second interception of the day. Both interceptions were converted into field goals, and early on the Oilers threatened to run away with the game. Delay, Brown up the middle, touchdown! Houston Oilers, Gary Brown on the delay, going over the right. For three quarters, the Oilers successfully dodged the bullet. Montana's gonna throw. Launching it deep for the end zone for Willie Davis. He's behind the defense and he drops the ball. Stitchman, Johnny on the spot. Although the Oilers repeatedly put Montana down, they never put him out. In the fourth quarter, Houston kept one eye on the clock and the other on Montana. 
This is the play that may decide the Oilers' season. The most exciting playoff game of 1993 seemed destined to go down to the wire. Short drop, floats it to the right for Davis. He's got it for a touchdown. What a catch by Willie Davis. Unbelievable catch by Willie Davis. He reached behind him and caught the ball. A perfect pass beat perfect coverage and put the Oilers behind. If you got anything in your bag of tricks, yeah. bring it out now. Eight straight completions gave Houston new hope. Houston never regained the lead. It was an unfulfilling end to a season in which the Oilers had accomplished so much. It marked the end of an era for Warren Moon as he walked off the field as an Oiler for the last time. While Houston searches for a new identity, they will draw upon the glory from their past. We've had a, a lot of success with the Oilers and uh, winning games, making playoffs seven years in a row, and can't take for granted we're going to be a good team. We've got to earn that again. In 1994, the vision of the 46 defense will be overseen by new defensive coordinator Jeff Fisher. Going to that inside, picked off, touchdown. Darrell Lewis made the interception. Back to throw, CQ is looking for Kuro, picked off, Steve Jackson. In 1993, Houston was undefeated within its division. A feat accomplished by just one other team in the history of the AFC Central. The defense led the league in interceptions, takeaways, and touchdowns. Next season, the offense will be directed by Carlson, a capable veteran who was 10 and 4 as a starter. What Carlson started in New England, he finished against the Jets. Houston was just the fifth team in NFL history to close the season with 11 consecutive wins. The Oilers outran their competition and streaked to the AFC Central Division title. Shotgun with White to his left, two receivers to either side, gets a snap, steps up in the pocket, throwing deep for Gibbons, he's behind the defense. They overcame every obstacle to transform a season of adversity into a season of triumph.